Are you ready, Edith? I'm ready, Christy. Are you ready, Christy? I'm ready. Okay. What did the turkey say to the turkey hunter on Thanksgiving Day? I don't know. Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Why did they let the turkey join the band? Because he can go blah, 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 blah. Because he had his own drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the turkey when he got in a fight? I don't know. He got the stuffing knocked out of him. Oh. If you call a big turkey a gobbler, what do you call a small one? A turkey? A goblet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. And this is a special Thanksgiving episode of Upside Down Tulips. Maybe your Thanksgiving has been turned upside down this year. Some of you may be spending it alone. I am. But if you're listening to this, then think of it as spending Thanksgiving together with us. Oh, that makes me feel good. We are reminded that no one gets where they are without the help and support of others. It's Thanksgiving, and we are so grateful to you. Thank Thank you. you. Upside Down Tulips. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Gobble, gobble. Oh, you can do a better gobble than that, can't you? Blah, 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 blah. No? <laughs> Edith, are you drowning? <laughs> Is that what it sounds like? Oh, that's too yeah. bad. Okay. I'm going to have to work on my turkey impersonation. Yeah. Well, folks, we're excited because we've got some Thanksgiving stories from our listeners, and so I'm sure we've got something here that everybody can relate to. They are so great. They're so great. I related to most of them, personally, myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh Uh-huh. But before we hit that, we're going to talk about our gardens, but it's in the middle of November, so Mm -hmm. how much of a garden update do we have? Well, I got a couple of things, Christy. I, uh, first of all, do you see this? Yes, you're shaking a packet of seeds. I'm shaking a packet of seeds that say corn salad, mache, heirloom. This is up in my garden. And it's not up by mistake, and it's not going to die when it gets cold. This, you can wipe the snow away, and you can eat this. I love things like that. I love this. Now, so, what zone is it good for? I don't know. Because we're in Colorado. We're zone I've been 5B. Gro- I don't know, honey. I've been growing this for years. It's small. It'll come back in in the earliest thing in the spring is this stuff, but I have it now as well. Love it. I love it. It's when really good. When did you good. plant it? I planted it today, but what's up, it seeds itself. If you plant it once. Oh, gotcha. And it, you kind of uh, broadcast it. You mm-hmm. kind of take it and kind of like throw it on the ground and put a little tiny bit of dirt on top of it and then just leave it alone. Nice. Yeah. So I did that Congrats. today. And you can have that. Enjoy that all winter. Um, I'm hoping so. And also... You're doing a little dance over there. You're no, excited. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> doing a little dance. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I planted peas today. Get out. Yes. I you thought know. I plant my my peas on St. Patrick's Day. I, I do both. I plant on St. Patrick's Day. That's my tradition. But I also plant them in November do you remember how you were talking about winter sowing and what did you call it? The striation of the stratification. Seed. Stratification. Well, the peas are going to go through the same thing. In they're, a natural way. In a natural way. They are not going to come up before their time. And I, you know, it's been really warm this week, so I waited until I know a cold front is coming in tomorrow. Uh-huh. And then rain is coming. So that will like tuck them in real good. Oh, that's great. What so, kind of peas? Uh maestro. They're a hybrid. Maestro peas. So they're fancy. They're very fancy. And I planted them at the edge of the garden, pretending like like there was a maestro there and the rest of us are his orchestra. <laughs> nice. That's how I can remember <laughs> where I planted it. <laughs> and also, uh, I'm going to plant more tomorrow of the seeds that I've collected from, from this past spring. Wow. So I've been a little bit busy in the garden today. You? I have a couple of things to say. Um, one is that I have continued to do a little bit of garden cleanup, mm-hmm. and this goes back to our episode from a couple, like last month, where we talked about cleaning up the garden. Yes. And because the weather's been so nice, I went out and I cleaned up the section. I have flowers in front of my vegetable garden, because I think flowers and vegetables go well together. And they're pretty together, yes. I have a calendula bed, which is another name for pot marigold. And also marigolds kind of grow on this little fence, this little patch in front of my vegetable garden. 
and I cleaned those out. But I used the rule, which is clean up a little bit, but not a lot. So I got uh, all the morning glories out and trimmed back a lot of the, the pot marigolds, the calendula. Oh, good. They are annuals. But didn't clean it, just didn't really super clean it out. Just a little bit. Because Did, do they always, reseed themselves, though? They reseed. And also, a lot of ladybugs live in there, and I don't want to disturb them. Right. Very good. Very good. So I did a little bit of that. And you'll be happy to know that the tomatoes I harvested from my attic. <laughs> you did? You didn't forget about them? You, I, mm-hmm. I harvested some, some tomatoes from my attic. Uh-huh. They were just green tomatoes up there turning red. And I not only did I harvest them, but I used them. And I made chicken cacciatore out of them. Very good. I love chicken cacciatore. So someday we're going to have garden update, and it's just going to be like, what's new in your garden, Edith? Nothing. It'll be a lot of snow. I'm yeah. growing snow in my garden. Yeah. Well, you know, I also, um, remember I told you last week about the, the cantaloupe that turned out to be delicious after sitting in my house? Uh-huh. Too? Well, I know you don't like this particular honeydew melon I know you don't like it. I so don't. Bear I, with me. Don't stop. Don't use the word hate. You're from Minnesota. You're not a I fan. Hate. I hate. I, that's how strongly I feel about honeydew. Wow. Like I serial hate killers it. and honeydew melons. They're right. They're together. Well, I like it. <laughs> and today, I opened one to see if it was good. Uh huh. It was delicious. Okay. Well, I dare you to bring me some honeydew melon and have me try it to see if it's delicious. But maybe you don't I, like it. I'm not gonna. You don't. Maybe like it. I just always get it not at the perfect ripeness. I will bring you some next week. Okay, it's on. It's on. All right. Because if it's delicious, I will say it is. But it's just always just bland and hard and chewy. Okay. Okay. It sounds like meat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Um, do you have some fact check? I have a fact check. I have a fact check. Because he, we here at Upside Down Tulips do our research, and we don't want to leave our listeners hanging. Um, so there was a, we did a thing last week about GMOs and Monsanto and Roundup. The, the really bad, bad chemical in Roundup is called glyphosate. I think that's how you say it. And I think there's glyphosate. Vari- glyphosate, glyphosate, yeah. something like that. There's varying amounts in different kinds of Roundup, which is maybe why some of it is still on the shelves. But my fact check, you had said to me, what about backyard gardeners? Do they need to worry? Because we've got this billion-dollar lawsuit going on. So here's what I found, Christy. There were two gardeners. I'm, I don't know if I should use names. I will. Gardeners Alva and Alberta Piliod say they use Monsanto's Roundup spray to keep weeds off their driveway for more than two decades. They would have flip-flops and shorts like you do in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Now they both have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and they were awarded $2.5, $2.05 billion in, man, in, in damages in May. Wow. So, wow. There's a school groundskeeper, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, who's in his 40s. He also, he also has the same blood cancer as the Piliads. And then a third man, this is, and I'm sure there's more, uh, he used Roundup for more than 25 years to keep the weeds off his oak trees. He got it too. And it was ruled that Roundup was a substantial factor in his diagnosis. Wow. So if you can at all avoid it, listeners, gardeners, do not use Roundup. Use agricultural vinegar, pull the damn thing out. Don't use Roundup if you can avoid it. And be careful with agricultural vinegar too, though. Yes, go ahead, talk. Well, because that can put that can burn you. You mean the human or yeah, the plant? Both. Okay. Okay. So wear your garden gloves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't be thinking, you know, just because you can get two point oh five billion dollars that it's worth it. Your life That's is worth. That's really interesting. Isn't that interesting? Especially the people that did it in their driveway, because I have to confess, I've done that. I put Roundup in my driveway yeah. to get rid of weeds. And were you wearing flip-flops or were you like... Probably. You, you sure. probably were. It was summertime. Yeah. Yeah, don't do it again, or garden, Christy. Garden Or we won't shoes. have a podcast. I can't do this alone. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who am I going to talk to? Thanks for the fact check, Edith. You're welcome. And folks, if you ever hear words or terms that you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, don't forget to check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. And if you want pictures of our gardens, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Because we talk to you like every day. Well, we don't. Christy does. She pretty much manages that stuff. 
but like every day, there's almost every day a communication. Am I right? Yeah, there's fun stuff on there. Fun stuff indeed. COVID-19 numbers are rising across the country. Hospitals are at the breaking point. The vaccine is not here yet. That means no family gatherings this Thanksgiving. It's a sad time. But for a small few, it just may be the best Thanksgiving ever! No long car rides in traffic. Are we there yet? No dealing with the airport. Attention passengers, all delayed flights will be delayed. No drunk Uncle Larry. When are you gonna get a real job? Your delayed flight has been further delayed and moved to the other side of the airport. No trying to explain systemic racism to Grandma. Actually, Nana, when we say Black Lives Matter, it just means Black Lives Matter too. I still don't see why all lives shouldn't matter. Attention, passengers. Your delayed flight has been canceled. Check back with us every hour for the next two days. No cooking for five days, only to have people complain about the food. Is this gluten-free? Do you only have four vegan options? Is there any sugar in this pie? And then you're stuck cleaning up while everyone is watching the game. Touchdown! It's a miracle! No stupid games. These cards are against my humanity. This year, you can sleep in. Stay in your pajamas all day and binge that one show. Eat whatever you want. Order in. If you want to make the traditional meal, you can go straight to the best part. Sandwiches. This is 2020. This is your Thanksgiving. The only Thanksgiving you can skip without being a jerk. 2021 is only 36 days away. Alrighty, let's talk Thanksgiving. Okay. But before we do, Edith and I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne and Arapaho nations. Yes, it's called Wheat Ridge now, but it wasn't then. <laughs> uh, what do you normally do for Thanksgiving, Edith? Um, normally, um, I watch some football. There was a time when I would have people over and stuff, but I, I am so stressed out when I cook for people. Mm. If, they're, if they're outside of my family. And I have found that that is not inducive to a holiday mood. <laughs> when your host is so stressed out, I get ridiculous. I start screaming at my kids. So of late, I've not been doing very much. So spending it alone this year is not that big of a deal for me. What about you? Well, normally, um, we will gather together with some friends and I will cook. Our families are kind of spread out all around the country. And flying and traveling during this time, we really don't have the time to do it. So it's just been nice to gather. I really enjoy cooking the entire meal. I find great, great pleasure in it. But I'm still going to make everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a 15-pound turkey because I love leftovers. I'm going to make your stuffing this year, Edith. The one that we put on the uh, website? Oh, it's uh -huh. the best in the world. And I'm going to make cranberry sauce. Oh, here's a question I have for you. So I always make cranberry sauce from scratch, uh -huh. but a lot of people prefer the kind in the can. What do you like? I love the kind in the can. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. had a, oh my gosh, I had a friend once and he brought over uh, the, the, the whole cranberries that you get in a can and horseradish sauce together. Ooh, nummy. Oh my God. Did you say nummy? I did. I'm sorry. I know nope. you hate nummy. Don't say nummy and don't say, say moist. moist. Please. Don't anyway, say moist nummy. It was fantastic. And I want to point out to our listeners, <laughs> Christy's making a huge sacrifice, because, and so am I, because I'm not going to be over here for Thanksgiving. That was going to be like an amazing meal, and I'm not going to be here because we're being so COVID aware. Well, I'm going to make you a plate, though. You are? Yes. You are? Of course I am. Oh, I'm gonna make you a plate. I'm making and I'm making two kinds of pie. Wait, wait. Do you hear angels singing? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, that so is. I'm gonna make you a plate. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna also make pumpkin pie, and I'm gonna make a chocolate pecan tort. Oh my goodness! So wow. And you're not even stressed. Look at you. You don't get stressed about cooking. 
No, I really enjoy it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's so good. Um, and there are um, some certain traditions that I love that don't really depend upon people gathering at Thanksgiving that uh-huh. I'm still going to do. Like what? Well, one of my favorites is to listen to Alice's Restaurant. Really? Do you ever do that at all? No. What a nice tradition. So folks who don't know is that um, Thanksgiving is now the time for the annual airing of Arlo Guthrie's Alice's Restaurant. And it was originally released in 1967. And it tells the true story of the morning after Thanksgiving in 1965 when Arlo Guthrie and his friend were arrested for littering. <laughs> I, yeah, I love this song. I and do. And it's 18 minutes and 20 seconds, so you don't hear it on the radio very much, except for this one exception on Thanksgiving. So if you live in a major metropolitan area, just check out your classic rock station, I'm guessing, and see who see who plays it. But I usually Somebody, I have my arm way up inside a turkey uh-huh. when it's, I'm getting ready to do the stuffing. Ah, that's such an attractive visual. Yeah. <laughs> She even did the thing with her hand and her arm, everybody. Yeah. That's attractive. <laughs> so I really, I love that part about it. Um, I just think it's so funny, and I love singing along to it. And and that, then, of course, you know, I named the turkey. Oh, that's right. I have helped you with that. I've offered suggestions. So ever since I was little, my family would name our Thanksgiving turkey after the biggest turkey of the year. And the first one I remember was Richard Nixon. Wow, that goes back. He was a turkey. Mm -hmm, He was indeed. So I've kept that tradition going. And sometimes we name the turkey after a celebrity or sometimes it's a little bipartisan fun with politicians or sometimes it's just some obscure turkey who defines the whole year. (laughs) Yeah. So I brought my list of past turkeys. Do you want to hear some of them? I do. One of the first ones I have written down is 1990, Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli, because they cheated, right? Because they were lip-syncing. Lip-syncing the song, and they won the Grammy for Best New Artist. Um, 1992, Amy Fisher. Amy, oh, the one who shot her. And mm. Long Island. Oh, the that's Long Island right. Lolita. Oh, she shot her lover's wife that's in the right. head, and she That's lived. right. She came right to her door. 1994, Tanya Harding. I've changed my mind about her since watching that movie. Oh, you know what? Me too. You know? But it was still a turkey move. Yeah, well, you still don't go banging someone's knee. Who's, yeah. Yeah, you don't do that. Yeah. What do you think about um, 2009, Richard Balloon Boy Heaney? Oh, he that guy was such a turkey. This was a guy oh. who pretended his son was in the balloon, in the hot air balloon, and everybody was freaking yeah. out. Everybody thought that, and it, and it was loose, and the kid was supposed to be on there by himself. All of the news... The news people were like, they ran out to the field and they were doing live reports. And so he made fools out of them. And we were all so worried. Oh my God, there's a little five-year-old up in that balloon. Where's it, you know? <laughs> what yeah. a turkey. What a turkey. What so a turkey. So who knows who the turkey is going to be this year. Maybe we'll tell people next week or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just stay coolly nonpartisan right. in public. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a little Thanksgiving trivia. Okay. Did you know that Sarah Jehosa Hale, best known for writing Mary Had Little Lamb, petitioned several presidents to make Thanksgiving a national holiday? No, I did not know that. I don't know how I've slept not knowing that. (laughs) The Wampanoag people who were at the first Thanksgiving do Uh not share in the popular reverence. For them, the holiday is a reminder of betrayal and bloodshed, and they have a day of mourning. Well, that that makes sense to me. Uh Uh-huh. They didn't eat turkey at Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving. They ate deer, Mm -hmm. corn, shellfish. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had this one you'd like. Oh, yay. So remember when we were talking about groupings of animals? Yes. And we talked about a grouping of owls as a parliament. Yes. And a grouping of robins is... Many things. Many things that we figured out, yeah. Like a reliant, yeah. A Batman. Yeah. A breast. What do you think they call a group of turkeys? I don't know. A group of turkeys is called a rafter. A rafter? Yes, because rafter... They hang from the rafters to draw... What? A raft is a large collection of something. Huh. Because turkeys are social animals and love to form groups. And most wild turkeys and domestic turkeys prefer to 
live and fly together in groups of 20 to 40. You know, Christy, that reminds me of something. It's, so one time when I was a teenager, you know, we lived on a farm mm -hmm. and a neighbor took me hunting. And so we went up into the hills of Pennsylvania and so I had this rifle and there was right there in front of me the most beautiful wild turkey I have ever seen. And I'm, I thought, I, I can't. I can't, mm -hmm. what? I can't kill that. Yeah. I'm in his house. So this oh. is, that is like the last time I've ever been hunting. So how old I, were you? Uh, probably 14, 15. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, 14, 15 year old girl, we're not going to go shooting stuff. Yeah. Well, some, some, some of you do. I'm not being judgmental. <laughs> we would have eaten him. Though I think you can also call a group of turkeys a gobble. A gobble. Mm -hmm. so which That's makes good. sense. It takes seven hours to cook a Thanksgiving dinner. And people spend 16 minutes eating it. <laughs> and people wonder why I got stressed. Right? Yeah. I yeah. thought you would like that one. Yeah. The yeah. average American will consume 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving Day. What? 4,500? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 3,000 for the meal and an additional 1,500 snacking. And it's so funny. They blame it on the tryptophan. Is that how you say it? The yeah. tryptophan? Yeah. And actually, it's just like plain old overeating. Exactly. Yeah. Too many carbs. Okay. TV dinners came as a result. In 1953, a Swanson employee accidentally ordered 260 tons of turkey. So to deal with the excess, they got an inspiration from prepared meals served on airplanes. Huh. Well, that's so interesting. Okay. Up until 1932, balloons from the New York Thanksgiving Day Parade were released into the sky when the festivities were over. Uh-huh. And Macy's offered a $50 reward for anybody who found a deflated balloon and returned it. Because most of them went into the ocean and choked whales. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some traditions are really not to be held up. They should be just let go. Yeah. And we're back. If you're just joining us, Christy and Edith here at the National Plant Show hosted by the Garden Club of Pueblo, Colorado. It just wouldn't be Thanksgiving without the National Plant Show. Now here comes the part plant lovers around the world wait for, the best in show. The judge has already examined the top winners in trees, flower, herbs, fruits, vegetables, house plants, and ornamental grasses. Now she's bringing forward the last group, the tomato group. This year's top tomato is the big boy, a beauty from New Jersey. This hybrid tomato comes from a long line of champions. Always a fan favorite, a big boy has won best in show over 20 times. Wow, the judge is really giving this big boy a thorough examination. And now the handler is taking the big boy once around the arena. Oh, oh I can almost smell it from here. So beautiful. Mmm, juicy, plump, so red. Look at that skin. <gasps> we are at a defining moment. The judge is taking one last close look at all the plants. She's going over to the table. She is signing the ledger. We have a winner. Here comes the cup. The judge points. It's the big boy tomato. Oh, no surprise at all. Well deserved. But wait, what is that running across the arena? Is it, could it be? Oh no, it's a squirrel. And he has run off with Big Boy. What a shame. The new winner is the ornamental grass, Big Blue Stem. Oh, I hate ornamental grasses. <laughs> Fights for the best in show tomato. <laughs> so kind of you. <laughs> I'll be back. I, I'm like Arnold Schwarzenegger with a bushy tail. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> And so now we have a very special Thanksgiving mailbag. Ring, ring. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> Good one. We're so nerdy, aren't we? Oh, my gosh. I know. Sometimes I think I'm just a 12-year-old boy. Oh, 
<laughs> now you're more like an eight-year-old. Boy, oh, but yeah, that's okay. okay. <laughs> you and your trivia, you crack me up. Okay, so it's special because this whole next part is from our listeners. That's great. Sharing with us. Sharing with us. We'll share with you these wonderful stories. Our first comes from Sally from Denver. And you know what's cool about this? She has titled it. The worst Thanksgiving ever. Uh Uh-oh. I love it when it's titled. She says, A couple of years after I was married, I again hosted Thanksgiving dinner. I had never cooked for such a large group, so it was larger than usual. There were 12 of us, and they were all my husband Jim's family, except for one of my students, a blind woman. I was nervous cooking for so many people, but I thought the table full of food looked beautiful. We said grace, and then we started in on the what we are grateful for section. I was looking for sweet stories, but that headed out the window as Jim's father said, well, it looks like she made enough gravy. Oh my goodness. Then my brother-in-law offered, and she finally made two kinds of potatoes. My blind friend grabbed my hand and asked, what do I say? I whispered, anything, but make it nice. She said, well, it all looks beautiful to me which was funny and nice, but made me cry and run from the room. Aww. The family members banged on the door and said, oh, come on, we're fine, you're fine. No, I wasn't. A holiday without gifts and religion was reduced to lumpy gravy and too many potatoes. Thankfully, I learned to say no when asked to once again host the dinner the following year. Isn't that something? Oh, Sally. Sally, we feel for you, but um, how, how, how sweet of your blind friend to say that it looked beautiful to her yeah (laughs) that's really (laughs) great great. okay this is pamela from denver okay there was a now ex-wife serving of stuffing that included the bagged giblets oh i did that once or the brother who always walked in not hungry while carrying a mcdonald's drink or the crabby hostess who began putting people's coats on the back <gasps> of their chairs as they ate the pumpkin pie. Oh, All true. Oh God. You know, Christy, I have kind of, I have one Thanksgiving that, that I remember. And I think this is what stressed me out for the rest of my life. So this was, um, my husband and I had just, we had just gotten into the comedy scene here in Denver. And we knew a lot of guys that had nobody. So we said, why don't we invite them over to our house? Mm-hmm. You know, Friendsgiving. Besi- yeah, Friendsgiving. Besides which, at the time, I was also pregnant. So um, I said, I, you know, I'm very stressed out about this. And he said, well, ask them to bring a side. Perfect. So we had three people. I thought, okay, I'm making bread, which is easy and I love to do, and I'll make the turkey. So they come, the guests come one by one, and... Um, Dave walks in, and he doesn't have anything in his hands. I'm like, Dave, (laughs) where's the side? He's like, eh, I didn't feel like it. Oh, okay. I said, well, we, you know, we do have two other people, so that's okay. So then George comes, and his hands are empty. I go, George, where's the side? He's like, you know, as I was taking it in, 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 uh, as I was bringing it here, I put it on the roof of the car, and... It smashed on to the road. I go, oh. okay, maybe Steve will bring something. So Steve shows up with a quart of iced tea, <laughs> which, <laughs> which he used as the glass for himself. He didn't even share it. Oh, my gosh. That was his drink. That was his drink. So that particular Thanksgiving, we went straight to sandwiches, as you say, because we had yeah. no sides. Oh, man. Yeah. I love that uh, hostess who puts people's coats on the back of their chairs as they eat the pie. Oh, that's just terrible. Oh, my God. That is terrible. I've wanted to do that before. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Our third one. This is from Rick from Indiana. It's called A Warm and Dry Thanksgiving. My wife and I were married quite young. For our first Thanksgiving, we hosted her dad. Ahead of his arriving at our house, he sent us a smoked turkey. Neither I nor my wife had had smoked meats before, so we stuffed it and roasted it for hours. 
My father and I, if my father-in-law and I were watching football when my wife asked me to come into the kitchen. Does this look right to you, she asked, pointing at the turkey. Well, it looks different, I said, kind of shriveled. <laughs> it's okay, we can still make gravy. So we tried to make gravy from the rather puny amount of drippings. We had to add extra chicken broth to make enough. When we sat down to eat, my wife's dad asked how we warmed up the turkey. We told him we roasted it at 350 for hours. Oh. Ah, he said, well, it was smoked. <laughs> so <laughs> really all you had to do was warm it up a bit. But that's all right. Let's dig in. Aww. The entire meal was pretty much like eating a salt lick. <laughs> but I've always been thankful to my father-in-law for pretending it was delicious. Another side of the coin. Yes. People just appreciating gathering together, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's a sweet story. This is from Douglas from Tennessee. Our Alex Trebek. This is our Alex Trebek. That's right. When I was a kid, we routinely celebrated Thanksgiving at my grandparents' house with the extended family. Each year, one or another of us grandkids, usually multiples trading off, would wait until the entire family had sat down at the table and said grace, then stand up and stand behind Grandma's seat. This was because we all knew that she wouldn't eat anything if we didn't. If anyone said, are there any more mashed potatoes, or I think we're out of corn, or something similar, everyone knew Grandma would jump up and hurry to the kitchen and try to address the perceived shortage. The designated grandkid would put a hand on Grandma's shoulder as she attempted to get up and then would say, sit down, Grandma, I'll go get it. Of course, while one of us was in the kitchen taking care of the request, another would somehow surreptitiously get up and stand behind Grandma and wait till the first returned. Oh, oh, that is so sweet. Very sweet. I that love that. That is so sweet. And I've been there too. Yeah. There's a lot of people who mm -hmm. have a lot of things, huh? Yep. Yep. Well, the next one is from Judy from Boca Raton. She says, Thanksgiving is and always has been the most important holiday in my family. Until this year, it's considered mandatory no matter where any of us live. The menu is set and has been since the 50s. The rule is you can add, but not take away any of the menu items. No pressure, right? <laughs> it's the late 1960s and newly married and we're in Detroit. I was about to do my first Thanksgiving on my own. I got special dispensation to stay in Detroit and not travel home to the Chicago area because I had just had a miscarriage and my doctor said I shouldn't travel. So my mom sent me the menu and shopping list. Neighbors were assigned which wine and dessert they could bring, but everything was on me. The grocery shop, okay, so the grocery shopping was done. I got out all the pots and pans. My table was set with my fine china. Let's do this. Dress the turkey, turn on the oven. Turn on the oven. I called my mom, nearly hysterical. I don't have the right oven. What do you mean? How can you not have the right oven? She asked. What do you see? I said, well, it says bake and broil, but it doesn't say roast. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's an easy thing it's, to misunderstand. It is. And of course it is. I want to know is how many more menu items does this family have if you can't take away any, but you can only oh, add can you, on? Oh, can you imagine? I've, t I've taken away in my family a long time tradition was a fruit salad at Thanksgiving, uh -huh. which sounds very healthy and everything. Uh -huh. And essentially what it is, it's whipped cream of with course. a can of fruit in it and a banana. Yeah. <laughs> At dinner. This is not dessert. Yeah. At I took dinner. it off, and I think my sister Lori still is a little disappointed that I don't serve it anymore. Oh. oh. Got the fruit salad. Okay. This is Karen from Denver, and she's going to talk about Spud's giving. Uh huh. I had moved to New York City just four months prior to my first Thanksgiving here and was attending the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. My classmates and I were all young kids for the most part, far away from home, and couldn't go home for Thanksgiving, as we certainly didn't have the money or the time. So most of us as well, this was the first holiday away from our families. I decided I would host Thanksgiving and have all my new friends over to my very small apartment on 29th between 2nd and 3rd. I shared this apartment with a woman named Krista that I'm pretty sure ate toilet paper. <laughs> 
truly. But that's a story for another time. I told my guests that I would supply all the staples and had everyone bring the dish that they were going to miss the most of their family gatherings. In Manhattan, grocery shopping is a bit of a challenge. I lugged the many bags of groceries, including a frozen 17-pound turkey a couple of days prior, up three flights to my apartment in my elevator bereft building. I wake up early that morning and the turkey is still sort of frozen. I've got to thaw this monster turkey as soon as possible. I had just turned 18. I had never lived alone. I'd never made a large meal by myself. I'd never dealt with a kitchen sink that looks like it belongs to one of those toddler-sized houses with a 17-pound, partially frozen behemoth jutting out, of which I can only submerge about one-third of the thing in the cold water at a time. I call my mom. I probably called my mom, no joke, 15 times that day, easy. She guided me as best she could from 1,700 miles away. I'm cooking everything. Turkey, who by this time I'm just calling bitch. Stuffing, (laughs) cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, green beans, gravy, all in this ridiculous toddler kitchen that somehow seemed fine prior to this day. I'm literally putting dishes and pans around the apartment, on my bed, on my dresser, on the TV, everywhere. Everything gets done, even the turkey eventually. My friends start arriving, each with a dish in tow. Each dish, one after another, is a form of potato. (laughs) Potato cornflake crunch, German potato salad, regular mashed potatoes, grandma's cheesy hash browns, twice-baked tater tots. I can't remember, but there might have even been an au gratin. There are approximately 16 of us in this Gramercy Park apartment, whose capacity limit, I'm certain, was three. We sat on the floor, and everyone told us about the specific potato dish that they brought, and why it meant something to them. It was beautiful and special, and thus a tradition was born. And that's the kind of tradition that I love. Me too. That's wonderful. Because there's stories behind all that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's just Connection to our family. and... And we have one more story. This is from Anna from Denver. She says, Several years ago on Thanksgiving, my mom pulled her favorite stuffing serving dish off the top of the kitchen cabinets, only to find the leftovers from the prior year's Thanksgiving (laughs) in it. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Why would you put it up there? Oh, my God. It was absolutely disgusting, but we had a great laugh over it. Christy, that's the kind of housekeeper I am. You would put, oh, man. I would, I would, I don't, I know how it happens, but that's. That, that, I could That's have done funny. that. Isn't that great? Well, and you know, the giblet story is also so common where people don't realize there's that little bag of uh-huh. giblets in there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because it kind of blends in with all the fatty stuff and all that stuff inside of the cavity. I like to use the giblet stuff and make treats for my cats. The giblets? I used to make gravy out of them. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's or put is... it in the stuffing. Or put it in the stuffing. Thank you so much, everybody, for sending us your stories and trusting us with them. Friends, if you have favorite gardening stories, successes, flops, we'd love to hear them. Please write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Yeah, because look how good the ones that we read today were. They were wonderful. Well, you could do the same. You could write us some stuff too. (laughs) They could, Edith. I lost my place on the outline. (laughs) (laughs) You're doing great. And now... Are you ready for the next part, Edith? The, is it inspiration? Yep, I'm going to do it. That. I've got it. I've got an inspiration. Okay. okay. And now it's time for the inspiration of the week. This inspiration is uh, was written by Tecumseh, who was a Shawnee Native American chief. He said, When you rise in the morning, give thanks for the light, for your life, for your strength. Give thanks for your food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason to give thanks, the fault lies in yourself. Mm, that's mm-hmm. good. That's deep. Isn't it? That's really beautiful. Especially during these times when it's just rough. But exactly. there is a lot to be thankful for. There, Yeah, that's what you got to keep your eye on. What are you thankful for? Yeah. Not what you don't have anymore. I'm thankful for you in this podcast. Oh, how nice. I'm thankful for you too, especially now that I know you're bringing me food. <laughs> of course. I'm super thankful. How could I not bring you a plate? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so nice. Hey, that was our Thanksgiving show. That was fun, Edith. That was fun. Did you guys like it? I hear them. They say yes. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. 
We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, please give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Tunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. We'd be thankful. A special thanks goes to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want to hear more of Denise's music, go to her website at denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. We did it. Gobble, gobble. (laughs) Gobble, gobble, gobble. (laughs) You're drowning. Help me. (laughs) Two fingers up. We're not waving. (laughs) I was... (laughs) 